We're starting to go live right now. We're going, wait a sec, I'm gonna frame this. So where's our banjo player gonna stand so I get you in the frame? All right, we're good, almost there. Give me a second. There we go. You might want to stand here so I don't have to for your pray in. You want to be on camera when you pray in? Okay. All right. All right. Wait a sec. Five, four, three, two, one. Wait a minute. Just like that, everybody became a telling evangelist. Oh. <laughs> Lord, we thank you, God, for your many blessings, your many graces, and your many gifts, God. We ask you, Lord, that you uh, be with us throughout the service. We ask you, God, that you uh, bless the band, Lord. Bless the folks that came out. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hat back on now. That was just for the oh. prayer. All right, so uh, who we have this time uh, is number nine, Cole. Uh, very blessed to have them. And then it'll be Wolf Creek uh, next time. And uh, looking forward to seeing them too. We got a flyer out there for everybody to see who else is coming next. And uh, hope to keep this thing going. So take it away, guys. This this is an old song done by the Carter family. Keep on the sunny side, and I see you already got the memo. And you, you can sing along if you know the words, or, or even if you don't. Sing along anyway, that's what I do. There's a dark and a troubled side of life.
This is one of my favorite old gospel songs. Apparently it was written by someone named William Golden, but uh, where I first heard it was uh, from uh, the Monroe brothers, uh, Bill and Charlie Monroe, before the Bluegrass Boys were uh, formed. Each day I do, each day I do a golden deed.
safely in North Carolina, which I'm very thankful for, uh, and I probably should have said this this morning in the morning service. i got to drive 13 hours when I leave here. I'm headed to St. Simons, Georgia for some training, and uh, I'll get back to some people that sound like me. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to try to make it past Atlanta and then take a nap and then go on in, so y'all pray for me because, well, it's Atlanta. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean it's 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 something else. I didn't like it when I drove a truck, and I don't. I, I ain't drove through there since well a couple years ago, and I'm probably going not gonna like it any better. But uh, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. We got another prayer request for a man that I watched him to work with. His name is Harold. He's ninety-six years old, and uh, World War II vet, fought in the Pacific with Patrick Nelson, and he came to your hometown. Oh wow. Definitely be definitely be praying for him. Who else? Unspoken prayer requests. I always have a ton of those. Started. I got three kids, so there's three prayer requests right there. I got two grandkids, and 
That's two more. So there's five right there, right off the top of my head. My mama's still living, my natural father's still living, and my adoptive father's still living. There's three more. So I don't have to go fa uh, very far to, to knock off eight prayer requests just like that, you know, because I know if they're like me, they can always use prayer. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, that uh, we can bring our prayer requests before you. We thank you, God, for the uh, uh, the group that come and uh, brought music. We ask you, God, that you uh, uh, just bless them. Lord, we pray for the folks in the Ukraine. Uh, I've never been through anything like that in my life, so I really can't imagine. Uh, so, Lord, I ask you, God, that you just be with them like you already have. Uh, Lord, we ask you, God, that uh, you be with each of the uh, prayer requests and the unspoken prayer requests. And we just give you all the praise and the glory for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So this week I want to talk to you about uh, what have you. What have you. Um, you know, I think the world is a little uh, twisted. Is I, I don't know about y'all, but I always hear about what people ain't got. What they don't have. Um, I, I, uh, I had a long conversation with my youngest daughter. Uh, and it was a very contentious one because uh, she said, you got this nice house, Daddy. And she said, you know, uh, she, she said, you're living good. And she said, you're living up here. And I said, do you know what it takes to get that house? I said, how many jobs does your stepmama got? How many jobs does your daddy got? How old is your father? And uh, my daughter's 22 wanting something that a 50-year-old has that I've worked all my life for. And so it, it's amazing to me that, you know, I was always taught when I was a kid, especially by my grandmama, to be thankful for what I have and to focus on what I have, not on what somebody else has or what, what, what we want. And so I want to take you through a few scriptures about what have you. So Exodus 4.2 says, uh, which is the main text, God looks at Moses. Moses gives this whole list of stuff. He can't speak right. He killed an Egyptian. He, you know, they're going to hunt him down. He, he's, they're not going to listen to him. And I don't know your name and all this stuff. And God just cuts him off and says, what's in thine hand? What's in your hand? So Moses had a rod that became a snake, remember? That changed the course of the Israelites whole thing. If you think about that, if you think about that rod, so that's a walking stick is all that is. Moses went to fight the biggest army in the known world. That's like chasing a bear with a switch. He went with a walking stick and led the Israelites out of Egypt. So he had a stick. But in God's hands, it became a miracle, because I don't know about y'all, but if I ever toss down a stick and it turns into a snake, I'll probably never pick up another stick in my life. <laughs> People used to ask me well, where I come from, the Pentecostal church. They said, preacher, you handle snakes? I said, yeah, hoe or shotgun, one or the other. <laughs> I handle them. I, I, I handle them. And they become belt buckles, they become boots, or they become like my binder I've got in the office. That's, that's made out of timber rattler. That's how I've always handled snakes. I ain't never met. My grandpa used to say, don't kill black snakes. They're good snakes. They ain't no good snakes. Okay? I will tell you this too, men. If a snake ever talks to your uh, wife, kill it. Look what happened last time. Okay? <laughs> so don't, don't, mess with, don't mess with snakes. But the rod became a snake. David had a sling and it used it to slay a giant. That's in 1 Samuel 17. Now you think about that for a minute. You got David, who is ruddy, which can mean red, or it can mean short, okay? You got this little kid, and you've got this fighting man that they're measuring his stature by cubits. It's a big old dude. This is like somebody my size, if, if y'all know anything about wrestling, Andre the Giant. That's like me going and picking a fight with Andre the Giant and all I got is a sling. And not even a good slingshot. You know, the one like we had when we was a kid where you pull it back and you can look between the uprights. No, he had this thing that you had to wail it like this. And you had to let one side of it loose to chuck that rock. I, just a side thing on, on, on slings. You know left-handed people are the, be are the best fighters in the world, right? Rocky Marciano was left-handed. 
Y'all don't? Okay. Well, the Bible tells you. Because when all Israel went out against this one group of the Israelites, the Benjamites, they said the Benjamites had 400 left-handed men that could sling a stone at a hand's breadth, which is the width of your hand. They could hit something the width of your hand. So it was left-handed. Anyway, so David went against a giant with a slingshot. With a slingshot. Have y'all been watching the news? These Ukrainians are my kind of people. They're hijacking, they're hijacking tanks with farm tractors. This is my spirit animal. I mean, I'm just going to tell you. Can you imagine some dude in Bib Overhaul that's been out there planting corn? And he's like, yeah, I'm going to get that come nighttime. I'm just going to go. Can you imagine you being a tank commander and your tank runs out of gas and you come back and somebody's done jacked that thing with a tractor? I mean, that ha that's happening. Look in the news. These people, you're going to have to kill them because they ain't going to stop fighting. They are not going to stop fighting. And that's the way David was. He went to his brothers and he's like, what is going on with this uncircumcised Philistine blaspheming our God? And his brothers are like, you need to be quiet. You see that dude out there? David's like, I, I got a slingshot. And you know, it's, it's really funny because if you look at the way, um, if you look at, at the way that, that Saul handled David, what was the first thing that he tried to do? He tried to put armor on him he couldn't carry. He tried to give him a sword. David didn't even have a sword. He had to take Goliath's sword to cut off his own head, cut his own head off. He didn't even have a sword to finish him off. All he had was a sling. It's kind of like this bluegrass service. When I first got here, well, even before I got here, Martin was calling me, and he's like, "You like bluegrass?" And I was like, "This is some kind of trick question. These people in Missouri want to figure out how big a redneck I am. That's what it is." And I was like, um, I'm pretty sure I'm still in Virginia. And if I said I didn't like bluegrass, I'd probably have to check my card at the door. They would take my driver's license. And he said, you know, he said, well, we want to start a bluegrass service. And I'm like, and then I came here and rode down Manchester Road. You know, there, anything, anything I want is within five minutes of my house of fitting. Like for real. Everybody is flipped out because we live in Fenton. My wife drives an hour to work in Granite City. I drive an hour down to Farmington to work, and it ain't nothing to us. And they're like, why would you drive all that way to work? Honey child, where I come from, you had to drive everywhere an hour for anything. I lived in the sticks. A bluegrass service, I would not think, would work here. I mean, if you come to both services, you'll realize it's a whole different ballgame, 10 o'clock. We got the smells and bells, we got the acolytes, we got the robes, we got the whole nine yards. Everything that you would think a high, church, high Methodist church is, we got that at 10. And then 12 o'clock, I chuck off those robes, put on my overalls, and come out here and we do a bluegrass service. And people are showing up. Now, some of y'all really need a lot of repentance, like my sister Janet back here. She, she's got to come and ask God to forgive her twice because she's so mean. Um, so she has to come to church twice, you know, so she get all kinds of forgiveness. But it's working. It's working. What David had in his hand was a slingshot. It's what he used. It's what he used to slow down the lion and the bear. It's what he had in his hand. He used what God had equipped him with. Saul's armor wasn't going to work uh, for David. You know, a, a big full-on contemporary praise and worship service works really well for Manchester. It's not going to work here. You've got to do the thing that you... Can you imagine this accent after Hillsong? I mean, I'm just saying. Fits fine here. I struggle with it in the robes. But can you imagine after Hillsong and then I come up and preach? Where did they dig him up from? It don't work. You have to use the things in your hand that God give you. I love this one. If you look in 2 Kings 5, 2 through 14, there's this Jewish maid that had a feeble voice, and she used it to tell Naaman about Elisha. Y'all remember Naaman? Leprosy? Big commander of the army? 
He couldn't get healed anywhere. He couldn't get, you know, it don't matter if you command thousands of men if you can't get near them because you have leprosy. I mean, how did that even work for him? Now, I know he wasn't Jewish, but in Jewish culture, you had to scream, unclean, unclean, unclean. Or today, I got COVID, stay six feet away. <laughs> you know, I got cooties, stay away. This little Jewish girl probably had never even spoke to him. Why? Out of fear. She was a servant. She was a slave to him. I mean, I can't imagine how much courage that took for her to go up and say, um, Mr. Naaman, sir, if you want to get rid of that, there's this guy. Now, he's a little eccentric, uh, but... If you do what he tells you, you'll be healed. Think of the weight of that. She had so much faith in God, and she had so much faith in the prophet of God that she spoke that very thing into existence. I, I mean, I, I don't know how other theologians look at it or people read the Bible, but I believe Naaman rode there on her faith, not on his. I believe I rode right into, I mean, my salvation is my own, but I believe I rode right to that pulpit on my grandma's prayers. My grandma prayed me right in there. I heard her pray for me every single night. All her prayers ended with, now I want to talk to you about that grandson of mine. She had a bunch of grandsons, but I knew which one she was focusing in on. That'd be this one. That would be this one. He went down there. Elisha didn't even hardly talk to him. He just like, go dip seven times, you'll be healed. And you've seen the whole thing. You see the whole thing play out. Naaman's like, wasn't there cleaner water where I was at? Wasn't there, or couldn't I took a bath where I was at? And another person had to say, had to use their voice, if he'd asked you to do a hard thing, would you have done it? See, sometimes, sometimes God doesn't ask us to do these big, magnificent things. He asks us to be obedient in small things. This morning, I wasn't standing in a pulpit trying to project my voice or keep people's attention or walk down at the right time or walk out at the right, right time or make sure I'm framed in these cameras and all that. I wasn't doing that. You know what I was doing this morning? I was making French toast for two little girls that come to this church. Why? They requested it. They wanted French toast. I didn't know how to make French toast. Simplest thing in the world, come to find out. I had to go online, though, and get a recipe because I do everything by the numbers. You know what happened this morning? It was interesting because me and the lady that we have to have two, like it, with, with kids, we have to say sanctuary policy. So like I can't teach Sunday school with my wife. I have to have somebody from opposite sex. It's, it's just a safety for the kids. And uh, there was a lady in there with me. And last week I didn't really teach much of anything. I just made an omelet. This week they were picking on me because I had to use a recipe to make French toast. Yours was picking on me. <laughs> she said, did you really have to do that? And she said, did you really have to look at it? Do you not even know what's in French toast? I said, you're exactly correct. And you know what, I, you know what happened? That whole thing flipped in a second. I said, you know, that's the problem with people today. And she said, what's that? I said, they never read the directions. I said, you know that Bible I preach out of every Sunday? She said, yeah. I said, that's the basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what Bible stands for to me. It's an acronym. And I said, you know, people wouldn't have half the trouble they have if they just pick that thing up and read it. And then I had two girls, and of course they went into, well, men never read directions. <laughs> I said, you're correct. I said, my brothers, they will literally open a piece of furniture and slide it out there and start putting it together and never look at the directions. I said, and then when they mess it up real good, they'll call somebody like me that actually will read it. I said, do you know why I read directions? They said, why? I said, because my grandmama raised me. Women read directions and recipes, and they have an order that they do things. Well, at least all the women in my life did. And guess what? If you didn't do it that way and in order, it was still wrong even if you got the right result. And I got to have a whole time this morning of talking about where we get our answers from and what's important.
just because a little girl asked for French toast. It's not the big things a lot of times that we do. It's the little things. Here's your one, Matthew 14, 17. There's a kid that had a sack lunch and Jesus, Jesus used it to feed a multitude. Have you noticed so far God has not started with what you don't have? He starts with what you have and works from there. And it doesn't matter if it's a staff. It doesn't matter if it's a sling. It doesn't matter if it's a feeble voice. It doesn't matter if it's a sack lunch. I mean, let's bring this up into modern times. What's your name, young? Adrian. Adrian? Avery. Avery. Okay. Avery, you ever been to Captain D's? What? You ever been to Captain D's? No, probably not. Oh, my gosh. You got mm -hmm. to take her to the Captain D's. I, I'm just going to tell you, when I was a kid, that was like high eating. We only went to Captain D's on Sunday. That was like the big time restaurant. We didn't have no Cracker Barrel. Anyway, so ima imagine this. You go to you go to any fish restaurant, Bob? You like fish? Don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going this is going south quick. Um, you like McDonald's? You like chicken nuggets? Oh yeah, your kid after my heart. My kid, my kid's gonna like. She's twenty two, still eating chicken nuggets. I think it's the only thing she can cook. Anyway. So imagine this, you show up for something like you go down to the park and you show up for a concert or somebody's talking you want to see or maybe there's a clown making balloons, whatever. You show up and you got this little sack lunch from McDonald's. You got your six pea chicken nugget, you got your large fry, what kind of drink you like? Milk, you, got, you like apple pie? Don't like that pie on either since they stopped frying and they ain't no good. So anyway, you like what? You don't like any pie, baby. <laughs> I didn't get this round on fried chicken alone. I had to have some pie. Anyway, so you take that down to the park, right? And everybody there is hungry. And the dude on the stage looks at you and says, how far are you at a minute? And you hand it to him, and he prays over it. And then he just keeps reaching in that bag and getting chicken nuggets out of it until everybody in that field is fed. See, that's what Jesus did with a sack lunch from a little boy, three loaves and some fish. That's modern. Huh? One, I thought it was five loaves and three fish, but it's according to which one you're at. I don't know why kids chucking around five loaves of bread either. But anyway, it's according, it's according to which version. You got 7,000, you got 5,000. I still ain't figured out, honestly. I still ain't figured out if that's the same story or if that's two different accounts. And people argue it all the time, and I don't know. But this is, the, this is the gist of it. There was a sack lunch, and Jesus fed everybody in that field with it. And that's all he had was that little sack lunch. So this widow... If you look on up, move on up to Mark 12, 41 through 44, you have this widow that has two mites. Now that's a mite. I, I don't know if you've actually seen a mite. A, a mite's smaller than a penny, and it's worth, worth less than a penny, okay? I actually got to see one over in Israel when I was over there, um, and it, it's really neat. So you know the story. She, she went in, and she dropped those two mites into little, they had like a box, and, and some Catholic churches have it. And actually a Methodist church of a friend of mine's, they don't pass offering plates. They have a box and you just drop whatever in there. Um, and she dropped these in there and Jesus seen it. Jesus told that story and said that she gave more than anybody else because she gave out of her need instead of out of her excess. You know, kind of like when y'all hear the change hit the buckets later. She gave out of her need. And now it's inspired people to give all over the world all the way since then. That story in the Bible has been told over and over and over. And it was a little widow with two little mites and dropped it in there. Dorcas had a sewing kit. All right. You got a sewing kit? Avery, you know how to sew yet? Come on now, girl. We got to tighten up. We got to teach you how to sew. We got to get we got to get some stuff going here. My grandmama had me sewing at your size. I had I had and I never could. My bone was fat, so I couldn't put the thimbles on. I was always sticking my fingers. Anyway, Dor Dorcas had a, a sewing kit, but used it in a big way to help the poor. 
You know, we have ladies that we bring plastic bags, right? And they weave them together and they make mats. We take those mats up to St. Louis and the homeless use it to stay off the ground, right? Last one, or last thing. We know Dorcas had a sewing kit. We knew the widow had two mites. We knew a kid had a sack lunch. We knew a Jewish maid had a feeble voice. We know David had a sling and we know Moses had a rod. What do you got? What do you got? Sometimes, sometimes I've got a pickup. And sometimes I will move you. Not every time. But sometimes I have a pickup truck and I haul things up to St. Patrick's. Sometimes I just have an ear and sit down and let an inmate tell me what it's like to be in a prison his whole life. I've got a clerk that's my age that committed a felony when he was 17 and he's still in prison, gonna be in prison for his whole life. He made a decision at 17 years old, it's gonna affect him for the rest of his life. We have a juvenile house at Farmington. We got two boys over there and I do say boys because what they do in Missouri is not what they do in Virginia. In Missouri, if you're under the age of 18, even if you're convicted as an adult, you have to be kept separate from the general population. And then when that magical 18 happens, you just get thrown out with everybody else. Got two boys that's gonna be grandpa age before they get out. 16 and 17 years old. So from there, I have a voice. Or a voice, well, no, I have an ear. Sometimes, Sometimes I just have to be there. I just am present. Sometimes people don't want me to say anything. They don't want to say anything. They just want me to be there. And see, you have all those gifts too. God's gifted you with something. And you're to use it for the glory of God. Whether it's playing music, whether it's preaching, whether it is listening, whether it is singing, whether it is weaving, it doesn't matter. Take that gift that God's given you and use it for his glory. It worked for Moses. It worked for David. It worked for a kid with chicken nuggets or fish. It worked, it worked with Dorcas. It worked with a Jewish girl with a feeble voice. It worked with a widow, and it'll work for you. Because the one thing I do know about the Bible his folk are all the same. Some are used, some are not because they choose. God will use you just like he used David, just like he used Moses, just like he sometimes uses me. He'll use you, but you've got to be willing to offer what's in your hand. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, offering time. I need a couple ushers. Are you going to come down through here swinging them like a little girl again like you did last week? We might. Yeah. We might. You're getting a little too old to skip. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to throw out your AC. You're going to tear your ACL. You keep skipping like that. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Don't you hit me with this. There's two. I got two TV cameras there and a bunch of Remember witnesses. Remember this. One finger pointed at somebody else. Three pointed back. <laughs> you can see me skipping. Lord, Lord, we thank you for this. Uh, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this offering. We ask you, God, it be for the uplifting of your kingdom and for the maintenance of your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>
That young that young was two fisting in the <laughs> office what? All right. Thank y'all. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so this is what you said to do a benediction. Um, somebody said, somebody said, why don't we sing a song before we dismiss? And I said, I don't know, why not? Now we'll have to do an acapoco, so you'll have to if you got a little sorry, acapella. <laughs> uh, anyway. Find one of these books, it's the faith we sing, and turn to 2282. <clears throat> Just so you know, this is my favorite hymn of like, I'll love it. I'll love it. Is it? Well, they were warming up to it. <clears throat> they said, we're going to use this as a warm up. This ain't our set song. And I was like, how disappointing. I was hoping this one do off my way. But I still got to hear them warm up to it anyway. Y'all ready? If you can't sing good, sing loud. If you can sing good, sing good and loud, okay? Brumley was a Missouri guy, by the way. Huh? Brumley, the composer, was a Missouri guy. Didn't know that. Yep. Huh, okay. I learned something new today. Huh? What, somebody tear the back of yours out? I'm looking. 2282. It's all the way in the back. And I will just tell you, I don't know why these are numbered this way. There's not 2,000 pages in here. But they didn't want to have the same numbers as the one in the United Methodist Hymnal because we're methodical about what we do. All right. You good? All right. Got the same green glasses I got. All right. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by. shine upon you and his countenance overshadow you and I pray that the God of heaven give you peace. You're dismissed. I'm going to Georgia. So. Do my best. Do my best. Avery, it was good having you in service, young. We needed somebody to pick on. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I better stop this thing here because I gotta put that up on the. Yeah.